What's up everyone and welcome to this lesson on box and whisker plots. Now from your experiences as a math student, I'm sure that you've come across different methods of visually representing data. Pie charts, bar graphs, and scatter plots are a few examples of these tools. Box and whisker plots are another method of visualizing data to help us to make sense of it, and that is what this lesson is going to focus on. So again, a box and whisker plot is just a tool that's going to help us to analyze data. So first, we need some data. So let's look at Jordan, a JV basketball player who was just called up to varsity for the last seven games of the season. So Jordan's using this chart to keep track of the number of points he scores for each of these seven games. Now we can use this performance data to create a box and whisker plot that will help us to evaluate Jordan's performance over this seven game span. Now our first step is to take those numbers and rearrange them in order from least to greatest. Now the first piece of information we can get from this data is what's called the upper and lower extremes. This represents the highest and lowest value in the data set. In this case, the upper extreme is 32 and the lower extreme is five. The next piece of information that we need is the median. Now we know that the median is the middle of the data set, so I work from the outside in until I get to the middle value. In this case, 17 is the median. And the final piece of information that I need is what's called the upper and lower quartiles. Now we can think of this as splitting the data set at the median into an upper and lower regions. Now the upper quartile is just the median of that upper region of three numbers, which we know is 20. And the lower quartile is the median of that lower region of those three numbers, which we know is 10. So we can say that the upper quartile is 20 and the lower quartile is 10. And now we have all the information that we need to construct our box and whisker plot. So we're going to start with a number line that fits our data. And we have to mark where our upper and lower extremes are at 5 and 32, as well as our median value at 17 and the values of the upper and lower quartiles, in this example at 10 and 20. Now imagine taking these points and elevating them above the number line. Our first step is to construct two vertical lines through the upper and lower quartiles and use these lines to construct a rectangular box that encloses the median point. And through that median point, we construct a vertical line. This represents the box in our box and whisker plot. And the final step is to draw horizontal lines that connect the upper quartile to the upper extreme and the lower quartile to the lower extreme. And notice that the graph itself is broken up into four different quadrants, each representing 25% of the whole. Now what you're probably thinking is, how can we use this graph to evaluate Jordan's basketball performance? Now, for example, by looking at the extremes, we could see that it's probably unrealistic to expect Jordan in an average game to score anything near his high of 32 points or his low of five points. Now, based on those extremes, you may think that Jordan is an inconsistent player. But if we look at the area inside the box, this is called the interquartile range, we can say that in an average game, Jordan will score between 10 and 20 points. And a coach can use this information to determine whether or not Jordan belongs in the starting lineup or on the bench. Come on! He can also use the box and whisker plot to compare Jordan's performance with the performance of other players. So let's extend this understanding to a real world example. We're going to join Jess, who owns her own coffee shop, and she's keeping data on the number of espressos that she makes per day. So remember that our first step is to rearrange the values in order from least to greatest. And now we're ready to get the information that we need. So first we'll start with the extremes, the upper extreme at 96, the lower extreme at 32. Now for the median, again, moving outside in to find the middle value, we have two numbers, 51 and 59. So we just have to add them up and divide that sum by two. So 110 divided by two 
is equal to 55, which is the median for this example. Now notice that the median is in between 51 and 59. So when I split my numbers up, I have to kind of draw a line in between those two values. Now to find the upper quartile, I find the median of those upper values, that's 65. And to find the lower quartile, I do the same thing for the lower values, in this case, 44. So now I have the information that I need and I can construct my box and whisker plot. So as always, the first step is to construct a number line that fits our data. So we'll start with points at our upper and lower quartiles at 65 and 44. And then we'll construct a point for the median at 55. And we'll use these points to construct our box. So again, vertical lines through the quartiles, construct your rectangle, and then draw another vertical line through the median. Then we're going to plot points at the two extremes, at 32 the lower extreme, 96 the upper extreme. Then just construct your horizontal lines, and the box and whisker plot is complete, and now you're ready to visually analyze your data. Thanks a lot guys for checking us out, and please follow us on Instagram, at MashupMath, for daily math tips, animated flashcards, and our math in sports infographics. Check it out! <laughs>